Hey, listen, I got two questions for you. Number one, do you enjoy food? Oh, you do? Great, me too. Number two, do you like money? Also, yes, yeah, I thought so. Well, you're in luck. You're the perfect candidate for today's video because I will show you four healthy meals that I eat as a student that are easy, affordable, and fun. You guys seem to enjoy the last video I did about this, so here's four more meals that got me through college. As a student who's trying to maintain a relatively nutritious diet and spend a relatively low amount of money on food, I care a lot about crafting these easy recipes that I can pretty much always rely on. These kinds of dishes are legitimately like 90% of my diet, and I want to share some of them with you, so let's just jump straight into cooking. Also, make sure to stick around until the end to see my personal favorite recipe from the bunch. You probably knew something with oats was gonna show up here, but I promise this is the most exciting oats recipe I've made so far. Oats can get pretty boring, I know, but this dish adds an extra dimension of goodness to them. These are peanut butter banana baked oats. We're gonna start with one ripe banana, hopefully more ripe than mine, and just bring it to a mush with your local mushing utensil. Next, let's crack one egg in there, pretty easy. And add about a tablespoon of 100% peanut butter, as in 100% peanuts, peanut butter, cause uh, all peanut butter is 100% peanut butter, if you think about it. A bunch of cinnamon because I'm a cinnamon freak. And just mix all this up. You'll notice this is a very loose recipe. I'm not really measuring anything, just kind of eyeballing stuff. Like this undetermined quantity of oats that I just estimated. We're also gonna need just a touch of baking powder. And now you can pretty much add whatever you want. I have some dried cranberries and some walnuts that I'm crushing using my own trusty hand. Add some sort of liquid. You can add milk, but in this case, I'm adding coconut milk until you get the texture of your liking. It needs to be pretty uh, sloppy. I don't know what other word to use, unfortunately. And then just get this in a baking tray or anything like that. And if you're feeling quirky, you can add some banana slices on top just for the flicks, just to show the world that you did in fact own a banana at some point in your life. This is gonna go in the oven at 180 Celsius for about 40 minutes. And yes, I know it looks kind of underwhelming, but the beauty with this is that you can just refrigerate it and have breakfast for days. And you can just top it with uh, whatever feels right in the moment. And this feels like having dessert for breakfast and I personally like that. And if you don't, make sure to leave a really angry comment about this. This next dish is so underrated and I feel like not a lot of people are talking about it. It's pasta salad. This specifically is a Mediterranean style pasta salad. It's so fresh and so satisfying. Sometimes I could take this over pizza, I'm telling you. You're gonna need some pasta and for pasta salads it's best to use small pasta shapes like this little guy. Just get the pasta cooked, drain it and rinse it under cold water. Now prepping all the ingredients is really simple which is why I enjoy Mediterranean salad in the first place. We got some cucumbers and I'm just cutting those in semi discs. Is that a word? You know, half a half a circle, half a slice. We also have some red onion and I'm trying to get this as thin as possible so it won't completely overpower the dish. And then we have tomatoes. You can use regular tomatoes. I like cherry tomatoes in this instance because they give the dish a bit of sweetness. Another important ingredient, the black olives. I bought these already pitted because I'm not a psychopath and just give them a very rough chop. We're not interested in precision here. And now let's make a simple vinaigrette. We need some olive oil, some freshly squeezed lemon juice, some vinegar of sorts. I'm using red wine vinegar here, uh, some salt to taste, and some freshly picked thyme leaves. Let's give this thing a shake to emulsify and taste it to make sure it's good. Now it's time to assemble. Let's take our cooked pasta, drizzle it with a touch of olive oil, and I like to add a ton of fresh parsley and incorporate that into the pasta. I love the freshness it provides. Now add the onions, the tomatoes, the olives, the cucumbers. I'm also adding some capers because uh, I love them. And a whole bunch of crumbled feta cheese. The last element is the dressing we just made. And now we gotta go to town on tossing this salad thoroughly. Maybe think about using a bigger bowl than me. And uh, honestly, we're pretty much done. Let's place it in a bowl to serve it. And this thing is one of the easiest and most satisfying lunches you can have. And it's also super affordable. And you can make it in bulk for multiple people or uh, multiple occasions for one person, which is you. 
this next one is a super quick snack that to me perfectly walks the balance of being nutritious and low calorie but also satisfying as a snack. This is a chocolate banana yogurt parfait. We actually only need a little bit of dark chocolate here. I'm using about 10 grams that I'm cutting into really really thin pieces. Uh, trust me it's really gonna give this whole thing a nice texture. Next we're gonna need one banana. I love my bananas as you can see and I'm cutting one half of the banana into tinier cubes and the other half I'm just slicing like this for topping purposes. And this whole thing is really simple. We only need a bit of Greek yogurt. Give it a bit of a stir to get it to a creamier and smoother texture. Add your chocolate, your banana and of course some cinnamon. Give this whole thing a mix and it's as simple as that to be honest. I eat a version of this probably every single day. It's so simple and easy to make. If I'm feeling adventurous I might add some cereal on top but uh, don't tell anyone. So let's move on to the main event. This right here is one of the most essential student dishes in my opinion fried rice. Hiya. If I were to teach a college student only one recipe or technique, it would be this one. Because it's just got everything. It's so convenient, so easy to make, such a great use for leftovers, it's affordable, and it tastes amazing. Let me show you how I made this one. First things first, this dish requires day-old rice. We need the grains to be a bit drier so they don't clump together as we're cooking them and turn into mush. Next, you want to pull whatever leftovers you have. Literally any veggies and protein can go in here. I have some leftover chicken breast pieces, some carrots that I diced, some frozen green peas, and a chopped green onion. Oh, and we're also gonna use one or two eggs, and I'm actually gonna start with them. Just crack them in a bowl and season them with salt, some MSG, MSG is very important for this dish, and some white pepper. Just give them a little stir and they're ready to be cooked. I oiled the wok pan thoroughly and brought it to high heat. So let's dump this egg in, and this should be a fast process. Just get it cooked on both sides, and don't worry if it breaks like like mine it will eventually be chopped up completely in the dish so we're just gonna remove this now now add a bit more oil and get that day-old rice in there interestingly this dish is called fried rice because it involves the process of frying some rice who would have thought? Anyways, after the rice has been frying for a while, I like to separate it and just dump all my vegetables in there. I'm looking to get a good cook on them, but definitely I don't want to get them soft and mushy. After that's done, I just mix them in with the rice. And now I'm also going to add my already cooked chicken. And now to give this dish a bit of flavor, swirl around a bit of soy sauce, add some MSG and some white pepper. And don't forget about that egg. Just get that in there and give it a good chop and you're pretty much done. Taste this stuff to make sure it's not poison and maybe top it with some more green onions. And you got an affordable, delicious meal that was just pulled together by leftovers, which is the epitome of college cooking. So I hope you found that video helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed and then click on one of these two videos. I know you like them, trust me, click.